What about this program in this area attracted you to come to Penn State? Because your hiring was certainly a blockbuster move for this university and really sent shockwaves all around the wrestling world mm -hmm. nationwide. Well, I think just the, you know, bottom line, it's just the, the, the great potential that the program has. Uh, you know, they've had a strong history, and I, I think that we can take that history and just build on it. And, and uh, if we do things the right way and with a lot of hard work and a little luck, I think, you know, we can really create a dynasty here. Your dad built a legendary high school program in the state of Utah. He coached you and your brothers. I imagine that he's had a tremendous influence on you as a wrestler and a competitor, all that he's taught you about wrestling. How has he had an impact on your coaching style? Well, I've spent a lot of time around him, and uh, I still ask him for advice on a regular basis. Um, you know, I think I'm real similar to him. I mean, he's a guy that, uh, I mean, really, at least I want to be. I mean, I, I, I want to I want to get a lot out of these guys. I want them to really be uh, competitors and guys that go out there and, and fight. Um, and that's something that he was able to, to create and develop in his program in Utah. You come to Penn State with probably the ultimate wrestling resume, undefeated as, as an undergraduate at Iowa State. Can you talk a little bit about what was the driving force for you behind that level of perfection? I just hate losing, really. I'm just uh, pretty self-motivated, and, and I just found uh, an opportunity, and I had everything that I needed to, to be successful, and I guess I just took, took advantage of it. And, and, uh, but it all comes down to just hating to lose and being willing to do whatever it takes to not lose. Through all of that success um, in your collegiate career and through the Olympics, did you feel like you had a target on your back? Did you feel like what an accomplishment that would be for somebody to be able to beat you? And how did you handle that extra maybe pressure and attention? Uh, well, through through college, I mean, I knew that uh, you know people wanted to wanted to take me out, I guess, um, and that was just something I dealt with. It was it was exciting to me. It was fun, um, you know. And you had to couple of different types of competitors, some that would try to keep the score close and some that would come out, you know, just in in a fury right right off the bat. Um, but that was just something you deal with and I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the, the target, but I didn't really consider myself a target. I, you know, I had a goal that I was trying to accomplish and, and I just, uh, you know, I just had good people around me to help me stay focused and, um, and moving in the right direction. Are you a goal-oriented person in terms of big picture or, or small steps? Some people you know, set their goal in the national title. Others say, I'm going to win today, and if I do that enough times, that'll, the national championship will take care of itself. So how do you as a person and as a coach set your goals? Well, I'm, I, I think I'm a, definitely a big picture uh, person. Um, you know, I came to Penn State to, to win team championships. I mean, there's no question about that. But I understand there's a process. and. Uh, when it comes to focus, you know, my focus, our focus as a program is on the process and, and really we try to break things down as, uh, you know, as far as we can to, to make things uh, controllable. You know, we want, if we can focus on what we can control and do the best that we can with those things, um, you know, we're, we're going to have success. With your record of success and, and the perfection that comes with you here and the level of fanfare that you've had, does that put extra pressure on you as a coach to, to succeed maybe faster than other coaches might be expected to here? Uh, maybe, I, but I mean, I, I'm not too worried about, um, you know, what other people's expectations are. I mean, I, I don't, uh, I, I put enough pressure on myself and, you know, my expectations I think are higher than than anyone, anyone else's, and, and that's, what I, that's what I go by. Let's talk about your expectations for this program this year, because obviously you've inherited you know, a program and you've redshirted some guys for this year. So what, what are your expectations for this season and for maybe the next five years for the Penn State program? Well, I think this year uh, we have uh, you know, some individuals that, that, some seniors, several seniors that have the potential to do real well at the national tournament. And, uh, some guys that haven't quite reached their goals, and, and that's you know I, I want to help those guys reach their goals so they when they they finish up their their college career that they that they're satisfied and and uh, and with with some of our our less experienced younger guys on the team this year, we just want to keep building them up and keep moving them forward and and just see you know w how far we can take them throughout the year. 
How much did it mean to you to bring your staff with you from Iowa State? Uh, well, I, I wasn't going anywhere without them. Uh, they were a big uh, part of the decision. Um, Coach Cunningham came out here uh, when we visited, uh, you know, in the interview process, and um, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't going anywhere without those guys. So I was real happy that and they're real happy. They they're really enjoying it out here, and they um, it's just you know Penn State just has so much to offer. So it's it's been it's been a good good change. You have your older brother Cody on your staff. Your younger brother is a wrestler for you here at Penn State. Came with you as well. Wrestling such a big part of, of your family. Can you talk a little bit about what the sport has meant to your family over the years? Well, the, you know, it's a rare meal that we're not talking wrestling or that we're going on a vacation that's not centered around wrestling. Uh, it's just been uh, something that's really kept us together and uh, given us you know, a lot of purpose out, you know, in just in a lot of ways. And it really has been a, a lot about family. And that's something that I, you know, I love having my brothers around. And those are the people I trust. And even in my competitive career, I think I had a big advantage uh, in school because I had two brothers there with me. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's, uh, there's no question about that. I mean, this family's, you know, more important than anything else uh, in this world. And that, and, uh, keeping them close, that's what it's all about. Knowing your history as a wrestler, a competitor, and as a coach, when you come into this wrestling room, what do you use to motivate the guys on your team? Well, I mean, we try to get guys that are, that are self-motivated, that are here because they know what they want to accomplish. They want to uh, see what they can do. They want to help Penn State win a national championship. They want to win individual national championships. Um, really, as a coach, we just try to keep them uh, on task and focused on the big picture, you know, focused on, and then like I talked about earlier, just helping them to focus on the process so they can make those uh, those goals, you know, be, you know, become their, their reality. When you go out and talk to recruits about the Penn State program, I would imagine you are now the biggest selling point for recruits wanting to come to Penn State, but what do you tell them about this program and your approach as a coach? Well, uh, it, it really hasn't been too difficult to sell Penn State. It, it pretty much sells itself. I mean, you, you, you walk in the room here and you know, um, you know, that, that, that it's a, it's supported. There's a lot, a lot of, a lot of enthusiasm for the program, and uh, the, the academic reputation is, uh, you know, stellar. It, it's difficult to get into to Penn State, and the, you know, the academic requirements are very similar to an Ivy League school. Mm -hmm. um, just the overall combination, everything pretty much sells itself. And then with our wrestling program, um, you know, we just help these, these, I think the kids know, um, but it, you know, that they can get their, get their, get the job done here. They can reach their goals. They don't have to, you know, travel halfway across the country to, you know, to find a place that they can be on a, on a national championship program. A lot of people know about your athletic accomplishments, but maybe not so many know about your academic achievements. How important has academics been to you, and, and how important is that when you're looking at guys to bring here? Well, it's it's very important. Um, academics is it's just got to be you know a given. It's not something that you just get by with, and that's just what I was raised um, you know under 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 those expectations that you know school always came first, and if uh, we didn't have school taken care of. You know, there, there wasn't any, uh, there weren't wrestling tournaments and those extracurricular activities. And, and that's a big part of being a, a great wrestler. I mean, you can't be a great wrestler and, and, a, and a terrible student. They just, it just doesn't work. You've got to have school and classes and your grades, you know, under control. And, and, um, and we expect the same out of these guys in the classroom as we do on the mat. We expect their best effort. When there's a transition from one coach to another, there's always that, that process of getting to know one another. And I wonder how much have these guys bought into your philosophy and how much, if any, have you had to buy into what was here before and maybe what, what their expectations were? Well, I, I think these, uh, the program had a real solid foundation. I mean, they, they took third in the national tournament just you know two years ago and there's a lot of talent in here and, and a, lot of, a lot of kids that that are willing to do what it takes to be successful. Um, so really, all, all that all we've been doing is just building on what they already had on that foundation and, and bringing in our unique style and mentality and um, just trying to help these kids reach their goals. Everybody's a little bit different, and everybody you know marches to a different drummer. 
Uh, so it's uh, it's a challenge with each individual, but you know our our basic uh, coaching philosophy is you know we want fighters, we want guys that love to compete, and uh, you know you worry about fighting, and I'll worry about uh, the results for you. This fall, you've signed four guys for next year's freshman class. They have six PIAA championships among them already, with still their senior season to go. I, I imagine three of the four of them will likely redshirt. You've redshirted quite a few from this year's freshman class. Can you talk about how important these two freshman classes will be for the future of this program, even though Penn State fans might not see them for a year or two? Yeah, absolutely. You have to, you don't have to, but you, 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 well, I guess you do have to. You have to have two and three classes in a row if you want to win the national tournament. Um, you, you know, unless you have some uh, you know, special circumstances with transfers or something like that. You know, you need two and three classes in a row to make it happen. And that's uh, why this was a very important class for us to go out there. And the four kids that we signed, you know, we feel like they're going to be competitive right away, especially mm -hmm. after a year of uh, in, being in our room. Uh, and we put those guys, you put them together with the, the, the tough class that we have redshirting right now. And, um, you know, Quentin Wright, who was, you know, just a year ahead of, will be two years ahead of the, this next group. But, you know, that, that's a team that can win. Your, your redshirt philosophy, is that to give guys a chance to maybe mature into the college wrestling arena a little bit? Or is that more yeah. to build, you know, to make a powerhouse team, you know, two years from now? A uh, little of both. Um, you know, it's, uh, we're thinking long term here. And, and, you know, like I said, I came here to win, win the national tournament. And we, we have the potential to do real well this year. You know, I'm not... You know, looking down the road yet. I mean, you're always preparing. That's what coaching is and, and recruiting. Um, but yeah, it's just a matter of uh, just getting the right kind of kids, and you just you got to keep them coming. You talked about the solid foundation that Penn State had when you got here, even though they haven't won the national title since I think 1952. And you've talked about how you're a big picture person and, and your long-term goals. So can you describe what you hope this program will be? What you hope to build here, maybe in the next five years? Well, there's no question we, we want to be a team that's in the hunt, uh, challenging for that national tournament every year. Um, you know, hopefully we win every year. I mean, that's my, my, my goal, you know. Um, but just being in a position uh, to, to, to really challenge where we're really in the team race and, and uh, you know, if we compete well, we win. You know, if, if the kids follow the plan and, and uh, stick, to, stick to their guns and what we, we've been working on, uh, you know, we'll get the job done. That, that's, that's what I, I want to do. And do you think you can get that done primarily with Pennsylvania wrestlers? Is Pennsylvania a strong enough state for wrestlers? Or do you recruit, do you look at your recruiting vision as being national or starting in Pennsylvania and, and then adding from the national picture? Well, I think you, you, try, to, you try to build your program around local kids. Um, local, just, you know, it helps to have local kids with, with community support if you're trying to build a fan base. Um, but, but bottom line, we've got to get kids that we feel um, fit into our program and our mentality and, um, and kids that love to train and love to compete because, you know, that's what it takes to, to build a, a championship team. From what you've seen so far here in Pennsylvania, how would you gauge the enthusiasm about the sport of wrestling and the excitement from a fan perspective from what you, you saw in the state of Iowa? Well, it's, uh, you know, I think those are probably the two you know, two states that have the most support for wrestling. Um, Iowa obviously has a ton of support, just, uh, you know, just how many years of his, you know, the history there of um, national championships between Iowa and Iowa State. Um, you know, everyone knows what's going on. Uh, but I, I, I think I, uh, Pennsylvania is very similar. I mean, I think the high school wrestling here is the best in the country. Um, the numbers and how many kids are, uh, you know, participating in high school wrestling are probably the best in the country. And, um, and that, that all comes with, you know, the, the support and the love of the sport. You know, they all kind of, it starts at the bottom, you know, it, mm -hmm. it really does. And um, so they're very similar, very similar. I think the potential, you know, once we really start rolling here, uh, uh, we'll, we'll have, you know, I, I think it's going to be tough to get a, a ticket into a match. And that's, that's what I'm looking forward to. What do you see as the future of wrestling as a whole in the United States and maybe on an, on an international level, having competed um, so successfully in both of those arenas? Well, I think the, the future, it, it, it's bright. Uh, the, the numbers are up, you know, with our youth wrestling. There are more youth wrestlers now than there ever have been. And um, it's just, a, it's, I, th I think 
it's it's very important for our country to you know to keep wrestling and to keep wrestling strong. Um, you know, there's political uh, issues that have hurt hurt wrestling, and uh, but there there I mean there there are more programs being started every year than the, than there are being dropped. The only issue is that a lot of them are Division two and NAI school, NAIA schools mm -hmm. and um, you know smaller division schools other than D1. Um, it's tough to start a D1 program. There have only been a few, um, but the actual opportunities for kids is still increasing. How do you see the Big Ten Network in in the idea of advancing the sport of wrestling and promoting the sport? Well, I think uh, anytime you you can get uh, these big matches on TV or any match, uh, it's great for the sport. You know, if, if people are familiar with it, you know they're they're gonna they're gonna have a good time with it. They're gonna enjoy it, um, and and. Uh, it's real simple, you know. If, if you don't know what's going on in a match, you're, you're obviously not going to watch it. It's that's just just how it goes. But the more familiar people become with it, I think there are a lot of wrestling fans out there. You know, there really are. Um, it's a great opportunity for the country. I mean, this big the Big Ten Network is really uh, really going to help keep wrestling strong. And, and I mean, it's just amazing now uh, what young wrestlers have, the access they have. I know when I grew up in Utah, I, I didn't watch one college match. Actually, I watched one college match, maybe my junior or senior mm -hmm. year in high school, my whole my whole life. And and here with the internet and you know the Big Ten Network, uh, these kids, uh, you know, they, it's it's really advancing our sport technically. I think with our youth. You seem to personify as a coach, as an athlete, as a person, all that Penn State stands for when you talk about success with honor. When you um, send your guys from your program out into the world athletically and in a personal level, what do you hope they take with them from being part of a Kale Sanderson Penn State program? Well, I think uh, just that fighting spirit. You know, I think that, uh, you know, life's tough. You know, it's, it's a challenge, that's why we're here. And regardless of where we're at, um, you know, you, you've got to give it your best effort. You know, whether you're up or you're down or you're in good times and bad, you know, just, just that fighting spirit and, um, you know, really, that's that's my goal with these guys, and and obviously all the little things are smaller. I mean, that's the big one, but you know, just being able to set a goal and and know, knowing how to move towards it and to, to make progress. And uh, but we want our guys to go out there and really contribute to the world. You know, have success. And um, I think if if you well, the Penn State alumni, uh, I mean, very successful. I mean, it's really been amazing, uh, and that's why uh, we have the support that we have, just because. Um, you know, wrestlers coming through the program, they go out, and they, they, they've been making a difference. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, when you do that, obviously, you're, you're rewarded for it. So it's, uh, um, and we just want to keep on, keep that tradition on. You mentioned these beautiful facilities that you have named after Rich Lorenzo, who's one of Penn State's legendary coaches. His son, I think, is on your team. Yep. Still, right? Um, have you had a chance to tap into him at all about the history of the program, or is, has he been able to offer you any advice? As you've made the transition here, well, uh, he we spent a, quite a bit of time our staff with, with Coach Lorenzo. Um, he runs the Nittany Line Wrestling Club. He's the he's the president, and he's in the offices, uh, you know, on a regular basis. And he, he's he's been a just a huge resource for us. You know, I, I like I try to pick his brain every chance I get, and he's just one of those guys that you know he's about you know the same type of thing that I'm about, which is just. Uh, effort and and you know getting the most out of these guys and fighting and discipline and commitment and all all of the you know all those those skills that really are, are necessary to build in a program and um, they've got a, a great history of, of coaches and luckily most of them are still in the area mm -hmm. which has been real nice for us. Have you been surprised at the level of support you've seen from the Penn State community or overwhelmed at all? Well, it's I think the just the love of wrestling in the state is it really has been uh, inspiring you know you go you go to an event and you just there's so many people interested in wrestling and so many people know what's going on and who's on our team uh, it's been really neat and, and just that hunger you know for a, a, a national championship and a winning program um, I mean I, every time I, I I'm out it, I really come back with you know just even more fire to, 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 to get the job done here that atmosphere in Rec Hall with the spotlight on the mat is just so electrifying. Has that been fun for you to, to Yeah, enjoy? I think it's uh, it's a perfect arena for wrestling. You know, home field advantage is really going to mean something at Rec Hall. 
it's going to be a tough place for our competitors to compete. And, and I, I think uh, last week we, we had over 4,000 fans there and in the, our first duel of the year. And people know that we had two All-Americans redshirting and three, three kids that were number one recruits in the country last year in their weight classes sitting on you know, redshirting. And they still went out and we have over 2,000 season tickets sold. That's just, uh, just the potential there is really, really exciting. I think some of those folks come to see you coach too, don't you think? Well, maybe once, you know, and they'll <laughs> see that that's not really too exciting. But, you know, we're trying to put a product out there on the mat that, um, that's entertaining. And that's what, that's what you have to do. If you, if you want to you wanna sell and sell out the, the arena and pack the house, you, you've got to have an exciting product. Your career and your success has been so documented through college and the Olympics and your coaching career. Is there one thing that you could tell Penn State fans or the Penn State community that they can't Google about Kale Sanderson that, that really puts a stamp on what you, you stand for and what you're going to mean to this Penn State program? Uh, I don't know. I'm just, uh, I just want to help Penn State win you know I'm not I work for Penn State you know it's not this isn't about me it's about just um, really uniting all of the forces and the powers and the potential that we have in the state and and uh, really unleashing that potential that's that's why I came is there anything else you want to add or anything else you want to say go Penn State there you go <laughs>